Hi everyone, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Ovi, I'm a second year medical student and welcome to Ovi Med. So in this week's video, as the title of the video suggests, I'm going to be talking about the costs of attending medical school. Now the costs of medical school depends on so many factors. Are you in-state resident? Are you out-of-state resident? Are you an international student? Are you going to the public or a private medical school? And so many other things. And in this video, I'll mainly focus on tuition costs and cost of attendance. Now, these are two different things. On one side, tuition costs are literally what you pay to the school for your medical curriculum, for your medical education. No extra fees, no nothing, just the pure tuition costs. On the other side, cost of attendance includes the tuition cost, all the extra additional fees that you need to pay, the living costs, the travel, and everything that comes with it. So these are two different things that I'm gonna be talking about in this video, tuition costs and cost of attendance. So all the numbers and statistics I'm gonna be showing you in this video are public information and you can find them online. So I'm gonna put the sources of the tables and the statistics that I show you in the description down below if you wanna read more or wanna find more information. You can also check out the university's website and their specific institution that you wanna to go to to see the actual up-to-date information. So I'm gonna start off with some general examples from the United States and from Canada and then I'm gonna to move to Trinity College Dublin which is a medical school that I'm attending. I'm gonna give you examples of living costs and things like that and how much you should prepare to pay for one year of medical school. Now, if you wanna skip directly to that part, I'm gonna be writing the timestamp in the description down below. So if you want, just click on that and skip to that part. All right, so starting off with the United States. So according to the American Association of Medical Colleges, the average cost for one year of medical school tuition with health insurance and all the fees for an in-state resident is around $42,000 for public schools and for private schools, it's about $62,000. This is in US dollars, by the way. And then if we look at tuition alone without additional fees, it's around 32,000 for public schools and 56,000 for private schools. Now, these are tuition costs. They don't include living, they don't include anything except for uh, what I just mentioned, the additional fees and health insurance that the school is providing. So now let's look at the cost of attendance which is another table that I got from the AAMC. So in this figure, we can see the median cost of attendance for private versus public medical schools, which includes all the fees. So the living costs, the tuition and other stuff like that, and also shows the median debt that graduates have from public versus private medical schools. So we can see that for private medical schools, the median cost of attendance is around 306,000, Whereas for public schools, it's around $232,000. If we look at the median debt, you can see that private medical school graduates have around $200,000 of debt, whereas graduates from public schools have around $180,000 of debt. Now, these numbers are only median, so that means that half of the medical school graduates pay more and half pay less or have more debt or have less debt. So th these are medians, they're not averages. So keep that in mind. All right, so now let's move on to Canada. So according to the Association of Faculties of Medicine of Canada, the average cost for tuition for medical school for a Canadian citizen, for a Canadian medical school, is around $17,000 per year, with the most expensive province, which is Ontario, having an average of $27,000 per year. So for four years, the average medical school tuition cost alone is between 70 and $80,000, depending on the province. Now, if we look at the debt, the average medical student has around $85,000 of debt regarding medical school expenses directly, and an additional $80,000 of debt regarding other non-medical school related debt, which comes around $165,000 of debt when you graduate medical school in Canada. Now, as you all know, being an international student often triples or quadruples the amount that you have to pay for tuition costs. So if we look at this example right here of the University of Toronto, you can see that the annual fees for a Canadian resident is around $25,000. But if you're an international student, that jumps to 95,000 Canadian dollars per year. So there's quite a difference there. So 
for an international student going to University of Toronto for four years, the total is going to be 380,000 Canadian dollars to have your MD diploma. So now then, let's move on to the medical school that I attend in Dublin, Ireland, which is called Trinity College Dublin or the University of Dublin. So if we look at this table right here, which I got off the website of the university, we can see that the tuition cost varies depending on the program. So for EU students, the government pays around 3000 euros, no matter what program you're in, except for one, which is dental orthodontic therapy. I'm not really sure what it is, but whatever. And I spoke with a few of my classmates and they told me that they pay on average 2000 euros per year. So I'm not really sure how the government pay works and stuff like that. So don't quote me on that, but that's what I can tell you about the costs. Now, if we move on to the international fees, which is the next column, we can see that for non-EU students, the fees here for dental school and medical school are max TBC. So I'm not really sure what that means. Probably the maximum that the school can charge or something like that. But I found another table, which is from 2019, 2020, right here, which shows that the cost is 45,000 euros for new entrance and then 46,000 euros per year for the following year. So that translates into 68,000 Canadian dollars and 55,000 US dollars. So one difference for the medical curriculum here is that the curriculum is five years long. It's not four years. So we still have two years of preclinical medicine like in North America. However, we have three years of clerkship. We have three years of rotations of uh, like hospital experience. So that means you have to pay 45 or 46,000 euros for five years. That translates into 230,000 euros in total or 338,000 Canadian dollars or 274,000 American dollars for five years. Now I'm gonna put that number aside. At the end, I'm gonna be making a table with all the costs of everything, the living costs, the tuition fees, the cost of attendance in total in euros, Canadian dollars and US dollars. So I'll stick all the way to the end if you wanna see that table. So now let's move on to the other costs outside of your medical school tuition fees. So now let's start off with the apartment, with the living expenses, with the student accommodation. So as you might know, I lived in a student accommodation for my first year of medical school. I made a few videos about that so you can go and check them out. I'm going to link one right here and some in the description down below if you want to check it out. And I stayed at a student accommodation because at that time it was uh, the most safe. I didn't know anything about Dublin, I didn't know about how renting works and stuff like that. I was affiliated with the school and money wise, it was the best decision I could do at that time. So the average costs for student accommodation is between, I'd say 9,000 and 11,000 euros per year. And that's just for a basic small room in a student accommodation living with other people in one apartment. So let's say that it's around 10,000 euros per year for a student accommodation. Now, this is just a small room. It's not like a big room or a studio or something like that. So if you want one of those, then it's going to be significantly more expensive. So let's just take to 10,000 euros for that. So let's move on to the cost of groceries. So on average, groceries cost me around 60 euros per week. That gives you 250 euros per month. And if you stay there for eight months during your semester, that comes around 2000 euros per month. Now that's just groceries for one person. It might be more, it might be less, depends on your eating habits and what you eat and stuff like that. So for me, it was around 2000 euros. So that translates into $3,000 Canadian. Now, moving on to the moving in costs, moving on on the moving in. So the moving in costs include um, basically everything that you need to buy in order to be able to move in. So if you're in a fully furnished apartment, well, that's good. The costs are gonna be significantly less than if you're in a non-furnished apartment. You need to buy a fridge, a table, a chair, a bed, a couch and stuff like that. So the things that you might need to buy when you're moving in, for example, are like, uh, the plates like for cooking, uh, the pots, the pans, uh, you might need a hair dryer. Uh, you might need like a, a computer screen, which is something that I bought, a mattress cover, which is something that I got as well. Um, I don't know, like towels, bed sheets, pillows, all that kind of stuff. 
So these are things that I call moving in costs because, well, you just buy these when you move in and then you keep them for an extended period of time. So for me, five years, for example. So I invested a little more in some more high quality uh, pots and pans, for example, and a good pillow. So that came around, I'd say 300 euros. So yeah, I don't know if you need any other things, but yeah, you need to consider that as a cost of moving in. This is only your first year. And it's not something that you're gonna buy again for another five years. So that's just an extra cost for the first year. Now, moving on to travel cost expenses. Now, by far, the most expensive travel cost that you're gonna have is plane, unless you're taking the boat or I don't know what, but yeah, the planes are pretty expensive. So if you look at a two-way ticket from Montreal to Dublin, the tickets that I found are around $1,000. You can find some that are a bit less expensive, sometimes a bit more, around $1,200. And if you're looking from New York to Dublin, I found some around 800, 700 US. So it comes at about roughly the same. So I'm gonna bump up the price a little bit in the average, but let's say that um, if you're doing four flights, let's say you're coming back for Christmas, that's two sets of round trips. So let's say that that's about 2,500 Canadian dollars. Um, yeah, I think that would be fair for travel expenses. Now, for the other travel expenses, uh, I used to walk everywhere. I walked to school, I worked to the groceries, I walked everywhere. So I didn't have to take the bus or the train or whatever. So that's a zero for me. Now, regarding the pandemic expenses. Now, this year is obviously very different from all the other years. From previous years, you didn't have to take a PCR test before boarding a plane and after you got out of the plane for your isolation. You didn't have to isolate in a hotel and pay for the hotel and all the tests that follow afterwards. So if you need to go next year, you need to plan around 2,000, let's, let, yeah, let's say 2,000 Canadian dollars for everything, for all the tests, for the hotel isolation and stuff like that. Now with the vaccines coming out, I hear that if you have the two doses, you might not need to go to the hotel. So that's great because that's a huge expense. So yeah, I'm really happy that when I came back, I didn't need to do the full isolation period in the hotel. Uh, because I got my negative PCR test. So, I mean, yeah, as you would have seen by my moving out vlog, which I'm gonna link right here. Um, but yeah, hotels are pretty expensive, especially with the COVID measures and stuff like that, with the security, the tests, the food and stuff like that. So yeah, that's it for the pandemic related expenses. Now let's move on to the other costs. Now that's just a category that I called like that because I figured, I don't know, it's just extra costs that I didn't know where to put elsewhere. So let's say uh, my phone. So I'm with Vodafone and it cost me 20 euros per month for unlimited texts, unlimited calls, and 10 gigs of internet. So that was 20 euros. I know that there are others that are less expensive. You can find one, um, I think for 10 euros per month and have the same thing, or even 15 euros per month and have everything unlimited. So the next time that I'm going, which is in September, I think I'm gonna be changing with another cheaper one, which has more for less. But yeah, that's just $20 times eight months. You do the maths. And then basically the only things that I was spending money on uh, while I was in Ireland was food and my phone. And I think that's it, there was nothing else. So let's add, let's say another 30 euros per month for the occasional takeout, or you wanna buy like uh, some merch from the school or something like that. I think 30 euros per month is fair enough. And then other costs to consider are like health insurance and stuff like that. So that's very personal to you. Uh, it varies greatly from person to person or from family to family and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna be getting into those costs because it just won't be relevant to you. So yeah. So now then, here is the summary table. You can look at it right here. So pause the video if you wanna read it, take a screenshot or whatever. This is just a very rough estimate of what you should expect to pay per year. So the total costs per year are around 62,000 euros, 92,000 Canadian dollars, and 74,000 US dollars. 
Of course, everyone is different. So take these numbers with a big grain of salt. This is just a very rough estimate of what you should expect. People living in studios or nicer apartments and stuff like that or flying in first class. Obviously, the costs are going to be a lot more expensive than that. Also, when the pandemic ends, if it ends one day, hopefully, um, you're not going to need to do all these tests or the hotel stay in whatever. So here's another table without um, these costs and without the moving in costs because that's just something that you pay during your first year and not for the following years. So I remember trying to find a video like this or information about this online um, when I was trying to set up my budget for the following years and I just couldn't find any who was in my specific situation coming from Canada and going to Ireland for medical school. So hopefully if you're in that situation or if you're coming from anywhere, Canada or United States or anywhere in the world and when you see uh, what the kind of costs are for an average year uh, in Dublin, well here they are. Uh, obviously, after the pandemic, when the bars open and stuff like that, you might have some extra costs related to that. Maybe 30 euros won't be enough per month. Just kidding, but yeah. Hopefully, this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button, comment, and subscribe. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you can follow me at ov.med. If you have any questions, just write them down in the comments below or send me a DM on Instagram. If you didn't see my previous videos, I'm going to link them right here. So hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next video.